This pretty good coverage is brought to you by Power Grip, the official retail partner of the European Pro Tour. Hello and welcome back to the back. Round 3 back 9 from the last international tournament of the year in Europe. It is the EPT All-Star event in this golf park Mihas. A very unique course. Sets up for a lot of interesting action. My name is Elias Lukonen and I will be taking you through this final round back 9. And talking about interesting action. We saw a lot of interesting action, a lot of quality play on the front nine, specifically from both Pekka Hyvenen and Nestori Tuhkanen from our card. Those two have separated themselves from the field. Pekka already with a four stroke lead over Nestori. And now it's all about keeping it together for him and for Nestori. All about destroying the rest of the course. It's not going to be particularly difficult to get a lot of birdies on the back nine. It's a pretty soft course, especially since the conditions, the wind conditions are down. We're starting on hole 10, 90 meter short par 3 going over a huge valley. You need to be at least basket distance or longer if you don't want to stay short on this very steep hillside. There's a lot of space on the left side. Many players opting to either go for a slight Anheuser backhand or a forehand hyzer. But Pekka, he's not a forehand player. He's going straight mid-range here. But this is a little bit off. It's not the greatest shot. He's gonna be outside the circle there on that left side. And what would normally seem like a very makeable putt becomes so much more difficult with that hillside being right next to the basket. I wouldn't be surprised if Pekka did not run it from there. As he does have those four strokes. Four strokes is a lot. But it's not a lot if you're not playing smart. That was a nice forehand from Alden there. I feel like the common play. He did control the distance just beautifully and Nestor here trying to do the same nice wide line hyzering back going straight towards the camera that's a nice shot as well just six meters left any further than that then it would be a bit of a scary pot against that hillside or towards that drop off rather and even Jakub Going for the forehand, although that is too far. That is almost an unrunnable putt. And you can see he's gonna just take his medicine lay up there. And I would expect the same from Pekka here. Although he has been feeling really good with his putter so far. He has made a couple of long circle two putts. But this time, no interest. He's gonna settle with a probable three-stroke lead, and that's going to be the case. Nestori continuing the hot play he had on the front nine. And Alden as well. Both Alden and Jakob haven't had the hardest of starts so far. Both only three under on the round so far. But you know, they have a lot of holes left. It's not an impossible task to even birdie all of the rest of the holes. And I'm sure that's what both of them are going for at this point. Definitely on this hole, hole 11. Once again, a pretty short par 3, only 78 meters. And honestly, it's quite simple. You just throw something slightly over these right side trees, fade it back against the hillside, and then the most difficult part, hope your disc actually sticks to the hillside. There's almost no telling whether a nice looking shot can stay there or not. There is, I feel like there's a bit of a luck factor to this hole. 
you really just have to put the disc to the right space and hope that it doesn't roll. And Alden here, this one's a little bit high, he's gonna have a pretty big downhill putt from there, from that left side. Only about 10 meters of distance, but he's gonna be going a couple of meters downhill. Nestori surprisingly trying to go for the low route. I suppose he must have made it work in the previous rounds, but I don't know. Once again, there's so much room up in the sky. For example, Pekka even going with a similar disc, that overstable mid range, as Nestori did. I believe that's actually a justice from dynamic discs. And that's a bad roll. That's what happens on this hole. There's almost no way that you can avoid th that from happening unless you just get a little bit lucky with how your disc lands. But as I've said before, all of that luck, even though it might feel unfair in the middle of the round, it's all gonna even out. We have three rounds in this tournament. It's very unlikely that somebody would get lucky three rounds in a, lo in a row. And that's a bad shot. That's a very bad approach from Nestor. Now he has a difficult putt from par. And he misses it. So Pekka, if he can just get up and down for the par or even get this birdie. Chance for two strokes. He's gonna have one though there. Only one stroke with that missed putt. But I'm sure he's happy with that. He was definitely not expecting it. And all in there, downhill getting the best of him. Now he has even a longer comebacker coming back, and oh no. That's tough to see. I feel like he's been pretty strong with putting throughout the tournament so far. But not this time. Moving back to two under par. And now Jakob, I kind of talked over his drive, but he had a beautiful drive. Able to stick it next to the basket, and that's... That's a good birdie to get. They actually flipped positions with Alden there. And if you would have told me that there was gonna be two bogeys on the lead card on this hole, I might have not believed you. Protiscus Jokery is the world famous putter that can be used for all kinds of throws and is an excellent choice for everyone. Here we have the Protiscus Jokery. The numbers are 3312. There's a very overstable but predictable throwing putter. It will always finish left and it will handle torque if you're a sidearm player. Anytime I'm wanting a fairly straight shot, but making sure it finishes left and isn't finishing to the right. I enjoy this disc, and I'm sure you will too. Next up, possibly the most treacherous hole on the course, hole 12. 95 meters, but way downhill, playing closer to 70. There's just this tiny peninsula that you have to hit on top of. If you miss the fairway, if you miss the green by a little bit, either left or right, you're gonna be rolling down the hill. And this angle shows it perfectly. That's so tiny, the area that you have to land your disc on. If you're a little bit left or right of that, you're gonna be rolling down the hill. And even in round one, we saw Mauri Wilman going over the basket and he was about 120 meters long. So very important to take some overstable disc here, not to get that long glide. And that's a beautiful shot from Jakob. Able to stick it down there. So difficult to do on this one. And Pekka going extremely low. Possibly playing a little bit safe. He knows that, once again, he does have some strokes to play with. And uh, even though everybody on the card is going for the birdie here, he knows that the birdie is not incredibly likely. And all then here, ah, oh, that sucks to see. That's what happens on this hole though. If you miss the fairway, you're gonna be rolling down. Nestor here, this is a great chance for him to hopefully get a stroke back. But that never had a chance, he was right the entire way. 
No chance for the birdie. Hopefully, a chance for the par. And talking about chance for the par, Alden with an incredible approach from all the way down the hill. It's difficult to even uh, stick the green from that position. So that was well done from him. And Pekka with a bit of a poor approach. That was not very good, although he did get a good slide. So it should be no problem for the par. And Jakob here to get the lone birdie on the card. Well done. Very well done. This is a valuable birdie to take you know we're going to the final stretch of the course only six holes left after this and it's a hole that not that many people are birding and uh still quite many people are bogeying even that hole 12 being as short as it is it was playing as the second most difficult hole on the course Interestingly enough, hole 13, which is twice as long, is playing way easier on scoring average. 165 meters, once again there's a lot of room. Biggest arms can take a full-on overstable hyzer all the way to the basket, but more of the normal top-level arms have to throw something slightly glidey, even get a little bit of turn on the disc to get that distance. Looks like Jakob is going with that overstable disc once again. Going for that flat release that he likes. Couldn't quite see the disc there, but we'll have to see where that is. And Pekka once again going with the Halo Destroyer. And this is looking great. Just a little bit short on that left side. He's going to have a putt at the basket from just outside the circle, I believe. Very safe putt. This time we finally have a hole that doesn't have immediate danger behind or next to the basket. So there's a lot of opportunities to run some of these putts, even from closer distance. For example, where Alden is, he can just give it a full go and not really worry about any sort of a comebacker. This is looking great from Nestori. Look at this shot in the bullseye, 165 meters. Great showcase of his power, able to reach the basket with the full hyzer shot. That's pretty impressive. And Alden there, not quite able to get it. Jakob with some difficult footing here, not able to put the disc up in the air. And this is a big putt from Pekka. Only five holes left off this and he makes it. He is going to have at least four strokes on second place, guaranteed. Going on to hole number 14. That was a big moment for him. Could have been a big moment for Nestori with that tap in birdie, but he ends up getting no stroke, even with that amazing drive. Usually before every shot, I have a little mantra that I say to myself, and that mantra is all the confidence in the world. When it comes to trying out these new discs, I know that when I'm gonna throw those discs. I'm gonna have all the confidence in the world. Moving on to a hole that has definite bogey potential. Hole 14, basically an island green, but it doesn't play with an island rule, but rather if you're outside the white stakes, you're playing it as a hazard, so play where the disc lies with a one-stroke penalty. But in these conditions, the wind is mostly down. These players are definitely trying to park it. Most people going for a forehand hyzer to hopefully go against the hillside with a fade. 
and that's exactly what Pekka is doing going with that zone. He is a mixed bag player, so still looking for a sponsor if there's this company trying to sponsor some promising players. Pekka is definitely up there. And he threw a good forehand and Nestori looks to have thrown a great forehand, almost acing the basket. What a nice shot there. Jakub up next. Nice looking line, maybe even ace running it. Wow, these guys are precise on this one. Let's see if Alden can do the same. And once again, is it wide enough? Not quite, as he hits the one bunker tree at the front of the basket. And he has fell down to the hazard. That is a costly mistake. Looks like we might have missed his third shot. So from the hazard, he pitched up to there. And that was his putt for the bogey. Tough bogey to swallow. And he's unfortunately going to be over par for the back nine. Not what you want to do, especially with the race being on. Not only for the first place but also for every position in the top 10. This tournament was packed with incredible players. I believe there was upwards to 20,000 rated players in the tournament. One of the better fields of the late season tournaments we've had. A nice three birdies by the card there. Lone bogey for Alden and we're moving on to a surprisingly difficult hole. At least difficult in some conditions. Hole 15. Very touchy 100 meter hole. You have this big slope on the right side of the basket. So if your hyzer hits the right side of the basket, you're almost always rolling down the hill. So what you want to do here is throw your hyzer maybe just a couple of meters left of the basket. So then you're gonna be caught by the left side hillside and you're gonna sit down under the basket. Not this far left though, Pekka's going way up the hill. That's not a good place to be, he's likely having to just lay up from there unless he wants to risk going for that death putt from far circle two. This is a better looking line, needs to get down though. A lot of glide on that disc. Looks like he did go with a slow one, possibly a justice there. But even a justice going too far on this 100 meter hole. And you can see how soft Jakob is throwing this. I believe there was a bit of a right to left wind here, so possibly contr contributing to these high shots being pushed further than normal. And looks like even Jakob with a nice line is going to be outside the circle. Let's see if Alden can fix that and yeah, he's got the distance control down. Only a few meters short, but he's in that one single bush. Gonna be a tough putt, but he's definitely the closest to the basket. And that's Pekka there. Playing for the win, not playing for the score. He knows that there's a lot of pressure on the other guys, and especially with Nestor airballing that over the basket. That disc is high, highly likely to be rolling down the hill from there. And Jakub also unfortunately missing. He has been putting together a sneaky good round after that bit of a slow start. And this is what Nestor is left with. He needs to put this in to put any sort of pressure on Pekka. And not able to do it. You can see how frustrating that is. Nestor is going to fall one more stroke behind Pekka. And it's going to be a five stroke difference with only three holes to go. Although in... At this very moment, it's good to note that Yalta Jensen was actually playing an incredible round. So, trailing Pekka right now 
the closest player trailing him is actually not Nestori, but rather Yalta Jensen, who has been shredding the back nine. I believe Becca is when you first sign two up strokes ahead of Yalta. You're given a PDJ number. Your PDJ number is a stamp for when you got involved in the sport. It's a badge of pride for players and a part of your disc golf identity. Get your number today. Visit pdj.com slash join. So what that two-stroke lead over Yalte, who has already finished, means is that Pekka doesn't have the opportunity to take bogeys and still win. He needs to at least par the next three holes and then he will have a great chance to become the champion. Hole 16 here, short but very uphill, only 75 meters but playing closer to 110. Players are throwing they can really throw anything. Most players are acting or are aiming for a bit of a hyzer line. You can also go straight or even a left to right moving shot. But Pekka here with a straight mid range. He's challenging the left side OB though. That's a big error in this situation where he doesn't have the budget to take any bogeys. But looks like he did stay safe there. This is more of the line that I was expecting on this hole. As Wow, Jakob almost aces it with a beautiful overstable flat shot. Looks like Alden is doing the same. What a beautiful throw. That was perfect. He's gonna have just a short putt left to close in on that birdie. And Alden while well, he's not close to the lead, he's actually very close to being the last cashing position in the tournament. As we see a good shot from Nestor there, he's gonna have a good bounce back after the bogey. But as I was talking, Alden, he needs to get two more birdies to be tied for the last cash spot in the tournament. And Becca there. Not the most incredible way up. I believe he might have gone a little bit long off the basket. As we see Alden. With a good putt. And you can see Pekka actually heard about this. He was actually saved by the fence. Had that fence not been there, he would have been even further away. But that's a good par. That's what he needs in this situation. He doesn't need the birdie. He just needs to par. Good birdie there from Nestori. Good birdie from Jakob. Becca being the only person on the card who does not get a birdie. Although for him it obviously doesn't really matter. He just needs to get out here with get out of here with no bogeys. And hole 17 is a pretty good hole for that. 114 meters, once again completely wide open. Playing slightly downhill. If you want to play it safe, you can leave it short and just pitch up under the basket. But most players try to park it or leave it just a couple of meters short. Since there is a severe drop off behind the basket. Once again, a lot of risk for roll away, a lot of risk for 3 Pot greens. Jakub here going for that nice flat overstable shot. Nice looking line and what a beautiful settle there. He knew the distance perfectly. Gonna have a short putt left to move to 19 under. Very respectable score. He's putting together a solid back nine here. And Alden, look at that overstability, going with something super beefy, and he's also right there in the circle. Very good shots. And Nestor next needs to do everything he can to still put pressure on Pekka, and also not only put pressure on Pekka, but as we know, Yalta Jensen has finished the tournament. I believe at 22 under par. 
No, Yalta Jensen has finished at 23 under par at this point. So that's good to know for both Pekka and Nestori. They need to beat that number if they want to beat Yalta. And Pekka there, that's not a very safe shot. Looks like he went with the driver. And is he laying up from here? He's not. He makes the putt from outside the circle. What a cold man. He did not have to run that. He definitely did not have to run that. But I guess he was just feeling so confident about the putt. And Nestor as well. Good make there. So unfortunate for him to have those two bogeys on the back nine. Turn those into birdies and he would be tied with Becca right now. And all then there, good putt. And looks like we're gonna have a star frame on hole 17. Well played by the card. And there's only one hole left to decide who is going to be the champion. Pekka is in good position right now, but it's not given. Hole 18 has seen bigger numbers, especially towards the green. Off the tee, it's a pretty simple hole. There's really no danger. Just trying to smash it there as far as you can. Try to stay on the gravel. Don't fade too far left into the bushes. Then you have this pole that the drone is flying right off, but your disc has to fly left off on the approach. So it's working as a mandatory. And of course, finishing off the theme of the course, a sloped green. Jakob here going with that overstable flex shot, as you would expect from him. And he's going to be slightly more left than you would like. Slightly shorter, slightly more left. Might not even see the basket from where he is. There's a bit of a valley on that left side. And uh, that's not where you want to be. Maybe I should have told Alden because he looks to be heading right towards there. Still a birdie opportunity for both of those guys. Nestore. He's throwing this one hard. That's absolutely ripped at the Mando. And look at this shot. He's almost to the Mando. That's pretty much a jump putt to the basket. That was a big, big drive. And Pekka here probably playing pretty safe. No. Definitely not playing safe. He's going right at the Mando as well. And actually skips right next to it. What a huge bomb! And uh, even a little bit fortunate. A little bit fortunate to not miss the Mando there. But I guess even if he had missed it, he could have pushed it up from the drop zone. What is Alden doing here? He's going to the OB Creek between the Mando and the hole. That's a big mistake and he knows that in order to cash in this event, he needs to stay at 15 under. And Jakob, good approach there. And they started just the jump putt to the green. What a humongous drive there. Not the greatest approach though. He's gonna have a bit of work left to do. And Pekka here, running the eagle. Not quite able to get it. But he has just two meters left for the win. For his first eight-year win of his life. What an incredible player he is. Only 17 years old. And Nestor here to finish in style. Of course he makes it. Very solid 9 underscore. Nothing he should be ashamed of. I'm sure he will feel a little bit bad for not winning today. But he already has a win this season. And Jakub also. Great performance 9 under. And Alden's gonna finish here. Not his day today, but it was great seeing him out there. And Becca Hiven and your champion. Ladies and gentlemen, EPT all 
Backers Open Division Champion, Pekka Hyvänen! Yeah! Oh, niin, joo. I'm so happy for my boy. Such a great player. He deserved this win more than anybody. Was playing incredible the whole week. And uh still unsponsored, but I hope he's not unsponsored next year. As we take a look at the top 10, Yalta Jensen right behind Pekka with that incredible 13 under round taking the second position and rounding out the podium Nestori with a solid round himself. After that we've got some familiar names, Isaac Robinson, Jakub Silver tied for fourth. Thank you guys so much for watching. Not only this event but the whole season. It has been amazing doing commentary for you guys this entire season and thank you to MDG Media. Without them, we would, ha we would not have all of this coverage. They're working so hard throughout the season. I wish you so. So please, if you want to support them, you can do that on Patreon or subscribing on YouTube. Thank you guys for the amazing season. See you next year.